hello in there. Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be taking apart, taking the strings off and doing the string changes, cleaning it up, show you what I've done on this Mexican Strat, and uh, we'll go from there. And today we're doing uh, uh, these are Diodario's EXL 120s. I think it's 9 through 42s are going. That's what we're using for this one today. I like those better than Ernie Balls. I think they sound a little better, but whatever. And that's it. And no, it won't hurt your guitar to, to cut them off at the same time. It's not going to hurt the neck or anything. Do, do, do. Get this strap off first. Only problem with these bridges is once you relieve the tension, it actually goes inside there. Normally I remove that, but I'm not going to bother today. And last but not least, where to go? There it is. And on the top. Do, do, do. Come on, let go, let go, there we are. <laughs> yeah, a while back, when I first got this guitar, uh, when I got the, the this guitar was bought at uh, Guitar Center, I don't know, many years ago, several years ago at least. A bunch of gunk. Anyway, uh, a lot of the saddles, the screw saddles that were this that were there, they were rusted, and you couldn't operate them at all. You couldn't raise or lower the bridge. You could move back and forth, of course, but you couldn't make it so that you could use the thing. It played really awful. The pickups that were on here were the ceramic ones and they sounded like crap. They had a real thin thin sound. I don't know if it was just the deal with Fender at the time on this particular one or on a couple ones. I imagine it was more than just this one. That'd be kind of weird. Um, anyway, uh, I put CTS pots in this thing. It originally had uh, three pickups in it. I didn't like the middle pickup at all. Didn't care what that sounded like. Uh, I put a, a lace sensor in the back. I think it's gold is in the back of here. And this is a custom wound uh, nickel uh, for the neck position. This one is, can be really, really loud and bassy. Um, but I, so I have to back it off a lot so that the bass isn't so pronounced. Uh, otherwise, it sounds real muddy. So I keep the, the treble side up a little more, but I bury the bass side stuff. You still have the pole middle pieces. Still works fine. The lace sensor doesn't matter how close you put it, um, so it's usually set up pretty close. Uh, tone controls, I rewired it, so now you have a tone control of the bridge and tone control for the uh, neck pickup. It's just three selector switch. Uh, the middle one's kind of an out of phase, but not quite. Uh, a little thinner sounding, but it sounds really, really good. If you want something that's not quite as ballsy, uh, the back and the front pickups sound when you put them through uh, a, a nice amp. Uh, they sound real, really gritty. It's pretty nice. Anyway, uh, I took off. I had this one uh, custom made with the two, so I could just use the two pickups. I tried taking the other one out, but I figured if I didn't have it, just get rid of it. So I bought the Pearl one on here. Uh, this used to have the old uh, uh, Mexican uh, strap bridge. It's really, really thin. 
sounded horrible. This guitar had no sustain when I bought it. Um, anyway, so I can't remember what, where I bought this one from, but it's a brass bridge. It's really heavy, and these are steel. And of course, everybody, you know, some people like them, some people like the, the original Fender ones, but I figured, you know, it sounds much better uh, than the one that was on here. Um, I had uh, this whole side of the neck I had to, I had to uh, clean up because it was it, when you played it it would basically rip your hands up because these weren't uh, they were sticking out so I had to file those all down. I had the nut put on a brass nut. nut. I figured it was good enough for ring baits, good enough for what I'm doing anyway. Um, as you can see it is it is a fender. There you go. Um, but the the um, Tuning keys really were like the old, there you go. The tuning keys were like really not very good. I didn't like them. Uh, so I, I got the Fender ones instead that are locking and they work really well. They have a real fine tune. It's like 18 to 1 ratio. I don't know if you can see them very well. But that's kind of what I got there. In the back, I got the same pearl as I do the front on that. And I put locking, to, locking, uh, uh, strap box on it so uh, but when you go, when I got this guitar it had no shielding in it so any real uh, any type of radio noise or any of that stuff it, the pickups would just sound like you're getting radio stations all the time so I had to reshield the cavity in this uh, also did the one in here too and when you shield it you have to put some of the shielding sticking out and I shield the pick guard itself underneath this the whole cavity area that's is shielded on the pick guards so wherever the pick guard meets it's shielded I don't know if I did that part because there is a little bit of shielding but it's not really shielding it's basically used for ground uh, but when I rewired it and stuff I I did a main ground into the shielding into the cavity so everything was real shield and stuff and uh, now right now I just gotta clean this up oh yeah where they put it. The nice thing about this guitar, though, is when you run it through a stack, it sounds really, really nice. So I've got a small amp that I use down here. I had a Marshall solid state one, and that it was horrible, absolutely horrible to use. And uh, so I stopped doing that. And once about once a year, I'll put lint seal oil on the neck and get it all cleaned up. is like a, a wine red or something. I, think it's a, I want to say it's a 90 something, 99 or whatever. I also replaced the plate on the back here with an actual fender plate. That uh, looked nicer. This was set up really, really badly. Just horrible to play when I first got it. That should be fine. Do, do, do. Uh, there's some stuff here. Power base stuff. Hmm.
I guess they're in pairs of sixes, or in pairs of twos here. Hope everybody's having a good day today. I know it's horrible out there, but you're well and stuff. I just figured I'd do this just because some, sometimes you see people and you're going, you don't have to put that much effort into doing this stuff. Well, and just so just so you know, when you when you go buy a small app or when you're looking for something that you can you know play on and stuff, uh, check to make sure that it sounds okay with your guitar. Um, It's really important that when you're looking at an amp, try to see what some of the players that you like are playing. But I always try to find a guitar that I just like the way it looks and the way it feels. Why is that not going through? My friends had strats and stuff, and I really liked the way they played. Like I said, this one here was really not good. Um, anyway, back on the uh, thing here. You try to make sure everything's straight. All the little holes are kind of aiming towards. Okay, come around. Where are you? There you are. Doo -doo -doo. Mm-hmm. 
There you go. And then you just put them in, you pull on them a little bit, and then just tighten them up. That's all you have to do. They will not come loose. Yeah, so I've been working on putting my studio back together again. And just this last summer, I finally got rid of all the old Delta stuff that used to be out way back when. I uh, really liked it for recording, but I couldn't get drivers for it, and there was no support for anything. So, of course, you're only stuck so much. I do Pro Tools. And I have this other little thing here that I've been using, but um, it crashes sometimes. That's the M Audio. I've been using that for a little bit. It seems to work pretty well most of the time. There they are. Now the deal with these. Come on. There we go. The deal with ah, the Fender ones, which are the ones that are in the locking ones that are on this guitar, is I don't know, um, they're staggered. Now there's a Schecter or whatever puts them out, and they're and they're individually staggered all the way down. But these these are basically in I think those are in twos. So the first one's like regular height for the bass side, and then as you go towards the high E, they get smaller. This one's these are basically in groups of three. So the first three, they're kind of high, still fine, but then normally instead of having to use a string tree, these ones are actually about a third lower. So they're pretty close to where the nut is when you're putting them on. And the, and the nice thing about that, I'm going to go back to your house. Uh, the nice thing about that is you don't need a string tree on them. Not, you don't need to push the string down to keep it in place or anything. The item might be stayed low. So you don't have to worry about them jumping out or, or anything come on. There we go. And the last one should be, there it is. So I really like that. So I took the string trees off that were on here and stuff. Come on, go to your home. back just a little bit so they won't be in the way and then I'll cut them off. And when you cut them off, you don't have to stick them in a hole, you don't have to do anything. They're already tight enough. You can go back down and just check your adjustments on them. And then I've got that tuner over there, and I'll check and get it all tuned up. And then on the drum set thing, I've had the drums, this one drum set I put together many years ago. I took it off of a uh, 90s, um, which I'll show that later. I'll do, excuse me, I'll do a video on that later. But um, I took uh, parts and I've got like an old slinger on a couple toms that I got from the 60s and stuff. But the bass drum is a 16 by 24. Never has sounded good. Uh, and I didn't like the way it was muffled. I finally, when I was going through the mic systems and, and setting everything up, Oh, we're not here. Um, anyway, when I was setting that up, um, I found there's like a plastic piece 
that you put on the back of the batter head. Uh, so, you know, if you go through a lot of heads and stuff, I understand why you do that. But you really shouldn't be using that. Um, because I, I found when I, when I was listening back on the recording stuff and when I was basically doing, doing some miking stuff, and I hated it. So I tore the whole thing apart, spent about four hours on it uh, while I had to re redo a bunch of stuff. And uh, took that one thing off because I noticed that when you hit, hit the, um, like the little disc thing that sticks onto the back, it's called an impact pad. Uh, Remo makes them, a bunch of people make them. Anyway, it was a Remo pad, but what the hell. Anyway. I'll stretch these out once I'm done. Uh, but if you, if you pound on the bass drum head all the way around it, and then you hit the middle where the pad is, you notice there's about 40% drop as far as what the tone is. No bass comes out of that pad when, when you hit it with your finger. It sounds really bad. It sounds real high and, and not very good. But then again, you're also can damage, the, you know, may have to buy more drum, bass drum heads, but um, that's not a big problem for me, so I don't generally care about that. But uh, finally, the 20, the 24 inch. When you hit it, it it's uh, after I did all the sound deadening and stuff to it to make it so the front head would be uh, not really tight, but would be solid. So when it hits, it sounds solid. Uh, that it, you you have. Anyway, I'll tune this thing up and get it going. But anyway, uh, that's it for this thing. I just wanted you to know uh, it's that easy. To, uh, just make sure you clean your guitar up and stuff when you every once in a while. When you change your strings, uh, especially if you do if you have, have, get sweaty a lot and stuff, um, you know, make sure you clean your neck and stuff up. I just use Windex on it. You can use I got polish and stuff. Other things you can use compounds. If you want to get really if you want to go back through and steal wool in the neck, I've done that and then. They put Lysol, no, Lysol, uh, linseed oil on it. Um, I use that when I'm doing the neck. You don't need a lot, but this neck was so dry at one time, um, it, it took a lot of a lot of uh, uh, fluid to get it to work. Anyway, um, the only reason I went with a brass nut is because it was a brass block and it didn't really cost much more. Uh, probably should use a graphite nut, but when I change out this neck, which I probably will do. Um, I'll get one that's probably put a graphite in there or a bone nut or something instead. Anyway, thanks a lot. Hope everybody stays safe. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.